Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to do another foundation review and wear test. The foundations are starting to drop left and right, and I know a lot of you are excited about this. This is the new Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So I went ahead and paid the fastest shipping. Thankfully, I got it early this time. So we're just gonna do a demo, try on, and a wear test. So I'm gonna tell you how it feels, how it looks, if it has coverage, if it's glowy, and then I will check in probably like throughout the day, about four hours in, and then I'm gonna try to wear it for eight hours and probably post this video today. So if you're new here, I hope you subscribe, and if you enjoy these first impression videos or foundation wear tests, please give this video a thumbs up. I will link this product down below, and I should link everything else I'm wearing as well. I forgot to in my previous Lancome video, so I'm gonna do better about that. So everything will be listed down below, uh, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So a little bit about this product, it's called the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation from Hourglass. You do get one ounce and this retails for $58. Of course it's pricey, we all know that. Uh, this is made in Korea and it has a 12 month shelf life. Now in terms of the shade range, I had a hard time. I had a hard time choosing my shade. I feel like a lot of us did. They looked like they ran deep. So like a light medium to me looked like medium, medium tan. I had a really hard time choosing a shade. The shade that I chose just when I glanced at it, I don't know if it's going to work, but I feel like it's good enough that we can try it at least for today. So I ended up going with the shade six, which is light medium with warm undertones. I didn't wanna go neutral because I actually bought a neutral foundation from Valentine and it's almost like gray toned on me so I'm having a hard time like I don't want to be orange but I also don't want it to be like gray so this is what it looks like from looking at it this looks darker than light medium to me of course it's in a frosted bottle so I'll have to see and this also looks quite olive toned it's giving me similar vibes to like NAR Stromboli which I use as a mixer so it might be a little bit dark for today but like I said light medium is you know where they classify this shade so let's talk a little bit about the claims on this it says a weightless liquid foundation that delivers buildable medium coverage with a light diffusing effect for up to 16 hours coverage is medium finish is natural it also says it's transfer resistant to humidity and sweat I don't know about that so we'll have to see the Lancome wore pretty well so maybe this is something like that where it's not really really dewy but it's somewhere in between so this is what the packaging looks like I mean it's typical hourglass very nice it has the bronze cap and then it does have a pump so let's go ahead and pump this out to see the shade Okay, so it's not as olive as I had anticipated. It's definitely deeper than light medium in my opinion. Feels like a nice consistency and quite a lot came out with one pump. So what I'm gonna do is apply my hourglass primer in my pore area and then we will zoom in and start application. So I've got you zoomed in and I have a couple pumps on my hand. I'm gonna use a BK Beauty 101 to start out and I wanna see what kind of coverage. It says a buildable medium. It's looking, I would say medium. So the shade is looking a little bit olive like I thought, sort of like Nars Stromboli, maybe not quite as olive, but in the same wheelhouse, blending easily. Okay, so this is what it looks like with a brush. I feel like the coverage is medium. I don't feel like it's a light medium, it's a medium. You could probably shear it out, mix it in with, let's say, like the e.l.f. Uh, Charlotte Tilbury dupe. What's it called? The Halo Liquid Glow Filter or whatever it's called. You could mix it in with something to shear it out or honestly just use less than I did. I'm gonna go in with a Beauty Blender on the other side. I always like to do this just to see if the coverage changes or if it gives me like a more flawless finish or you know, if it enhances my texture. So this is what we're looking like with one layer of the Hourglass Foundation. In terms of the differences, I feel like you can just get more coverage with the brush and use less. Pretty typical. This side, I had to use a little bit more and I can see just like a little bit of redness peeking through. So really I would just take the brush and just sort of stipple over, you know, my acne scarring and areas where I'm red. But this is, I would say, a medium coverage. Definitely. 
I could see this being like a high medium coverage if you needed it to, which is nice. So I was able to easily build up those areas that I wanted to with a brush. I probably would use it with a brush just because I like more coverage using less product. I do feel like it is a natural finish. It's a little bit more glowy than a natural finish. I would say sort of like in between natural and radiant, but not quite just radiant where it feels heavy or greasy. I don't feel that it's enhancing my texture. I didn't have any issues with it like smearing or not sticking to my nose, which is a huge problem I have, especially with like glowy foundations. In terms of how it feels, it definitely feels emollient. It's definitely heavier than the Lancome that I just tried, but again, it's not quite as heavy as like the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. I feel like it's sort of a hybrid from the way that I'm seeing it right now. It's not, you know, gonna be like crazy dewy glowy, but it's also not gonna be matte or flat. It's still gonna give you a nice sort of glow to the skin without being like super oily or greasy. So this could be a good option again for those of you with like combo skin or even just normal skin, uh, oily skin. I don't know, we have to see how this wears. So what I'm gonna do is go off camera, finish the rest of my makeup, and then we're gonna zoom in, do some close-ups, see how it looks with all of my products applied, and then we will move on to the wear test, but so far I feel like it looks good other than the fact that the shades and the shade range was really, really difficult to figure out. I really wish brands would just start posting like swatches in sunlight or just like normal swatches that are not, you know, like professional. It was just difficult for me to decide a shade. I feel like the shade is okay. It's not perfect, but it's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish my makeup off camera and then I will check back in and we'll see how everything lays on top. Okay guys, so I finished my makeup off camera. I will link all the products that I'm wearing down below. Everything blended beautifully. I had no issues, no skipping. It set beautifully as well. I do feel like my skin looks quite smooth. Usually with a glowy foundation, I have issues with like texture or it lifts when I put powder on it. I didn't have any of that. Just comparing this to the new Lancome Tint Edel Glow, I feel like a lot of companies may be moving in this direction where they're doing something maybe somewhat in the middle. So instead of a radiant finish or a matte finish, they're doing sort of like a soft glow natural finish and I'm here for it because I really cannot wear those super intense radiant foundations. A lot of the time they just slide off. They make my texture look bad. They just feel heavy, they transfer. So for me, I am loving the trend of something sort of in between and that's what I feel with this. I feel like you can build the coverage or you can sheer it out. Definitely has more coverage than the Lancome that I just tried if you were kind of curious. And this is a little bit heavier, it feels a little bit heavier, but I feel like it worked beautifully with powders just like the Lancome. So I don't feel like this is going to slip and slide. It's not one that I feel like is going to get all over my hand if I rest my face on my hand which a lot of the really dewy emollient formulas do. So I'm quite impressed with this. I feel like it's quite smoothing and I just feel like my skin has a very soft, natural look to it. Not quite as powdery or matte as I typically go for. So we will have to see how this wears. It is early in the morning now, so I'm gonna be checking back in probably in about four hours and then I'll do my final check-in at about the eight hour mark. I'm trying to get this video posted today. So I am curious how this is gonna go. I really have no idea. I'm hoping that it's gonna be good like the Lancome. So I will see you guys here in a few hours. All right, so I'm back from my first check-in. Uh, I don't know who I thought I was that I was gonna wear those lashes all day. It's so funny, when I used to work like outside and I used to work in a club, I would film before work and I would wear like these dramatic looks like I have on right now and then I'd have like the huge lashes and the hair down. Ever since I like started working from home full time, the second that like I'm done filming content, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but I'm like hair back, bra off, lashes off, like I'm in full <laughs> relaxation mode. Is anyone else like that? It's like someone wearing jeans in the house. It's just literally not possible for me. So anyways, it is now almost 4 p.m. So I applied this around 10.30. So I've had it on, what would that be, for five and a half hours now? I wanted to check in earlier, but it is what it is. So what I'm seeing is really no wear other than I'm feeling a little bit heavy in the pore area. It could be because I applied a lot of foundation. I am definitely guilty of that, wanting to cover up the redness. So it could be just, you know, me applying too much that's making me feel just a little bit of texture enhancing around my nose. Now my chin, again, a little bit of like dryness clinging, very similar to what the Lancome did. 
So I don't know how this will play out in the next few hours. So it's four o'clock right now. I'm gonna try to check in again. I'm gonna try to hit the eight hour mark and then upload this video. But in terms of like oiliness separating, I don't really notice anything other than just my oils peeking through and it doesn't feel heavy. It's not like a heavy emollient type formula. So I feel like it's comfortable. So that's all I have to report right now. It is four o'clock. I will try to check back in sometime around like seven, 7.30 to give my final thoughts. All right, guys, so I'm back for my final check-in. It is now 6.40, so we're going on a little over eight hours. I feel like I have, you know, a really rounded opinion on how this is gonna wear. So for me, I feel like I'm noticing a little bit of wear around my forehead. I do sweat, it is hot here. So that is pretty normal for me. I didn't use a setting spray or anything like that because I just wanna see how this would wear on its own. I am a little bit oily in my T-zone, but really nothing crazy, nothing that I feel like looks horrible. It's a little bit more dewy than the Lancome I just tested, but it's very similar in the way that it's kind of like a in-between. It's not overly glowy, but it's not matte and dry. So I feel like a lot of people will enjoy this foundation. I thought the coverage was good, definitely more coverage than the Lancome. And I like that they didn't put a fragrance in it. The Lancome I really liked, but this with no fragrance was really nice because when I used the Lancome the other day, I mean, you can really smell it when you apply. So I'm happy that I didn't notice a fragrance. It blended easily, powders played well with it, and it did give me a natural finish. So I feel like it wore pretty well on me for a foundation that says glow in it, usually that means I'm going to be an oil slick, and I don't feel that. I feel like I could powder and be okay for another few hours. I am noticing slight clinging to dryness on my chin, a little bit of wear, but really nothing that shocks me because I do often, you know, rest my hand under my chin. It's not going to be as long wear for me as like double wear or anything like that, but this is something that I feel like I don't have to baby all day. I just will not reach for something that I have to powder every two hours. It's just too high maintenance for me, and it really makes my texture look bad. And this one I really feel like is in the middle of the road So it's something that I could use mixed in with some of my matte foundations or alone Without having to look in the mirror every hour and make sure you know that it's not breaking apart Right, you know don't look like greasy or whatever it is So overall, I think a lot of people will enjoy this foundation My only gripe is that it was really hard to choose a shade So once you choose a shade and you get the right one, I think you would enjoy this But I will say there was moments when I was like I'm 7.5 I'm six. No, I'm six. Like, I could not decide, and I decided to just be cautious and get a lighter shade. So I think these do run dark, but that's just my personal opinion from looking online and getting my shade in the mail. So you guys will have to let me know what you think. Did you pick this up? Are you going to pick it up? What do you think about how it wore on my combo skin? I would love to know. I will link this and every other product I'm wearing down below, even though I look crazy. I'm ready to, you know, wash all this makeup off, watch Netflix, and just relax. So I'm going to post this video and then do just that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and stick around and subscribe if you love new makeup content. And thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.